Hi, my name is Marianne Opst and I'm a complex abdomen specialist at Regents Hospital in St. Paul, Minnesota. And I started this YouTube channel a while back because um, I was trying to help people do complex wounds over the phone and I thought it might be helpful if there is a video that you could watch. So it's kind of how I do what I do at work and I hope it helps you in your practice. Today we're talking about a technique that I am part of, but I certainly did not make this up on my own. This is always a team-based procedure. You need an amazing surgeon to work with to do what we're going to do. And so we call it the skin sparing technique. And what happens is we find wounds that have a lot of undermining. And instead of taking that top layer of skin off, we're going to actually instill underneath the skin level and then kind of tack it down. And so we started calling it skin sparing technique and so it kind of stuck. So I'm gonna go through a quick presentation and I'll just show you some of the technical tips on how to do that with the equipment. And I hope that you enjoy it. So we're gonna talk about negative pressure wound therapy with installation and using the skin sparing technique. I'll do two cases. We'll do them nice and quick so we can get to the demonstration. So this is a 27-year-old with a terrible necrotizing soft tissue injury. Here's all of the information that you would normally see on a patient with necrotizing fasciitis. Many debridements before we decided to use the skin sparing technique on him. We're using hypochlorous acid, which is Vosh, and the 3M installation vac unit. His necrotizing disease came all the way under his stomach and then all down his leg. And so you can see I have installation ports all the way down with the negative pressure ports following them. Each installation port has to be its own 3M unit because you only get one installation per 3M vac alta pump, but you can Y in extra negative pressure. So that's why you see more negative pressure ports than install. And what I try and do is use the negative pressure ports to pull the fluid in different directions that it probably wouldn't want to go because gravity is kind of how the fluid works because during the instill phase, there's no negative pressure, right? It's in a soak phase. And so once the soaking is done, the negative pressure will deploy again and it'll pull that cleaning solution towards the negative pressure ports, hopefully taking the debris with it. What we do is we take the waffle foam and we put it on each side of one of the standard instill foams. And then we put it deep underneath the wall that is the injury. So you can see here, I'm holding this up. This is 20 centimeters deep. And so we have the waffle foam on either side. The instill port is way up underneath the skin. But you can imagine if we put the instill port right here on the surface, that's not going to get way up underneath. And so we really want to make sure we're cleaning these wounds, especially necrotizing fasciitis, by having the instill getting all over the wound bed itself. Here's another patient. She had a gunshot wound, had many injuries, but she had this small entrance where the gunshot went in and she was draining a liter a day out of this wound. And so we knew underneath here was this big, ugly wound. And here we are in the operating suite and you can see here's her, her urostomy bag that's over the bullet wound. And we know that there's a huge wound underneath of there from the trajectory because this is one of those assault rifles. And so it really causes like cavitation and, and really can destroy subcutaneous tissue all the way underneath there. So we make a small incision in the skin because, you know, her skin was pretty, right? It was healthy and everything. And then we're just going to excise all the necrotic tissue by just taking it out and using suction and not having to make this huge wound for this poor lady, right? Then we're going to put that gray foam that has the holes in it deep into this wound bed. And so the instill port is inside this sitting way up over here. And so it's instilling. So the fluid is coming down this tubing into the wound itself. And then the port is sitting way back over here. And this is your negative pressure tract. So the incision is only 12 centimeters long, but the wound is huge underneath of there. 
And one of my favorite stories about this patient is here's the settings for this patient. 75 milliliters of Vosh, a five minute soaks every two hours at a negative 125. And so one of my coworkers, Angela, she went to check on the patient the next day and she called me because she's like, why do you have 75 milliliters going into this teeny tiny wound? That was so great that she picked up on that. I was so proud of her. And then and I explained to her that we have foam way underneath. Then she was like, oh, it makes more sense. Good catch on her part. And you can see just one dressing change. We went back to the OR for this first one. It's just clean as a whistle in there. And so we did the next one at the bedside. We prepped it with lidocaine because, of course, we got to pull that big foam out, which is not going to feel good. So we, using the instill port that was way under the skin, remember, we instilled some lidocaine on the edges and way underneath, and she just did great. I'm still putting a barrier ring around all my instills and drape as well, just to make sure I don't have any leaking during that instill phase. And so here she is at the bed set all complete. And then that instill port, here's the tubing that hooks to that instill port. It's way underneath this wound way up here. And this is the negative pressure port itself. And here she is all sutured up. So that is the lecture portion of this. And I just want to show you a couple quick tips on how to make your little instill port. When you work with the negative pressure instill foams, whether it is the new blue foam that has holes attached or the gray foams that come with several pieces. You have to use either a large dressing because the large dressings come with the ports that are separate. The large dressings have this instill port that is completely separate. They're fused in the package, so you have to pull them apart, right? But it just is a regular negative pressure track pad and then the instill tubing, which is kind of like the IV tubing. And the reason I'm saying large dressing is because in a medium dressing, they come hooked together. You can't, you can't pull them apart. They're all together. They come through the track pad together. So you can't use that. So if you only have medium kits at your facility, the workaround is that they sell these two tubes with just the tubes and not the foam. And so they're very much less expensive than trying to get a large foam. So let's say your facility has only got medium foams, then no problem. You just ask them to supply you with the tubing without the foam. So you can do this technique. And so we can Y in as many of these as we need, right? But we want to make this little port friendly to go in there. So obviously I wouldn't want this paper to be in there or the sticky drape, it just does, it's not needed. So you can either cut or you can just peel this off. So it just peels right off, super easy, just like that. So now I just would take this and let's say I have an undermining this wide. So I would take this, I would put it in the middle and I would take a piece of foam that would fit appropriately. And I would tuck that in there so it's laying flat I'm going to tuck this in here. We call it tacoing or sandwiching. And then you're just going to stick that into your undermining. And then this is going to come out through the skin, right? And sometimes, as you saw in the presentation, I use a little bit of hydrocolloid to kind of wrap around this so that I don't have an air leak. And then you drape, drape all over the entire wound. Super simple. So that's our skin sparing technique, and I hope that helps some of your patients, and I appreciate you coming and listening to this video. I know that you're probably very busy. If you would like to get updates from this YouTube channel when we put out new videos, you can hit the subscribe button and then you get alerted on them. And there's also a place there where you can email me if you have any questions about a technique that I talk about, or if you have better suggestions. I love to hear how to do things better. I would love to have you send me a note. So have a great fistula fun Friday. I know we didn't even talk about fistulas, but they're still my favorite thing. And I hope that you guys will try this technique and spare some skin.